In a lion's household, the share of chores doesn't look fair. While the lionesses go out and hunt, bringing home the bacon, or warthog, the blokes are seemingly good for nothing and lie around waiting for dinner to be served. So why do only lionesses hunt? Out in Africa's savannah, the job of providing the equivalent of 15 T-bone steaks for each of the lions and the 20 cat pride falls squarely in the paws of the lionesses. Her hectic schedule involves licking the kids clean, schooling the teens, finding a water hole, and on top of that, they have to spend eight hours a day shopping for wildebeest and stuff. They do all that and still manage to look good on the prairie. The males, however, well, they haven't even got a ball game on the TV to keep them awake. It doesn't sound fair, but the lionesses are probably glad the males aren't around to slow things down. Females are smaller, more nimble and better organised. They work together as a team, corralling their prey into deadly traps. And when it's time to pounce, their streamlined bodies accelerate to 50 miles an hour in just a few seconds. The lions are much heavier and, truth be told, a bit slow. And with a glorious mane that's easily spotted, well, this guy is pretty useless in a hunting party. So why do the lionesses put up with him? Well, the lazy lump has a very important role to play. Because while the lionesses hunt, he's keeping the family safe and fighting off intruders. In the savannah, circling the pride, are jealous males. These bachelors aren't happy because they have to hunt for themselves. They would like nothing more than to get cosy with all these lovely lionesses. Their not-so-secret plan is to oust the alpha male, hook up with the pride, and make their own cute little cubs. If the male succeeds in taking over, something truly horrific follows. To stop the mums from wasting time nurturing cubs belonging to the previous incumbent, the new king of the block will kill the youngsters. Seems cruel, doesn't it? So, to protect the cubs from other jealous males, Dad has to use his bulk, claws and teeth to fight them off. In fact, the reason the lionesses have latched onto this lazy guy is because he's big enough to protect their cubs from all the other horrible male lions out there. So although the mums are doing the lion's share, deep down they know he's doing an important job keeping their cubs safe. Mind you, a bit more housework would go a long way. The animal kingdom has an abundant supply of gross. Lizards that shoot streams of foul-smelling blood from their eyes. Gulls that projectile vomit at unsuspecting predators. But topping the list is a prehistoric monster from the deep with the most revolting habit of all. So, what makes hagfish the most disgusting animals on the planet? Hold your breath. We're diving down 5,000 feet to the darkest reaches of the coldest oceans. Because here, amongst the world's most bizarre creatures, lives the most revolting of them all, the hagfish. Even its name's unpleasant. Its gelatinous head is filled with multiple rows of razor-sharp teeth which are unleashed when a dead fish sinks to the sea floor. Dinner starts when it burrows itself into the carcass. And it gets worse. Now the hagfish eats the dead fish from the inside out. Ugh. And it'll do the same to living creatures too. It's really not fussy. Hard to believe this is not the hagfish's most disgusting feature. Fishing boat captain Mark has bravely agreed to show us. I'm going to show you how amazing these animals are and what they produce that is their defense mechanism 
for other animals eating them or bothering them. What is that? Oh, gross. The more you agitate them, the more slime he secretes. The gunk is excreted out of those circular pores running along its skin. When the gunk mixes with seawater, it turns into a disgusting snot-like mucus. One hagfish can fill a five-gallon bucket in minutes. And that is disgusting. <laughs> it's kind of like a bad cold. Hey, Mark, you want to try tasting some of that slime? I'm kidding, of course. Oh, no, wait, he really is. Oh, that is truly gross. <laughs> Salty. <laughs> yeah, it's, <laughs> that's disgusting. <laughs> and that's the taste that greets potential predators. Oh, look, a hungry shark, and he spotted a tasty little snack. Yummy. Ah, a mouthful of slime. Their gross habits are one of the reasons hagfish have survived for 300 million years. But that might all change if we develop a taste for them. Do you want to give it another go, Captain? Uh. <laughs> the hagfish needn't worry. And, and, it's hard, and it's hard to swallow. <laughs> and just in case you're thinking about it, <laughs> do not try this at home. Uh.